Level 2 Fitness Instruction Anatomy and Physiology The life course of the musculoskeletal system and its implications for special populations exercise. By the end of this session you will be able to describe the life course of the musculoskeletal system including relevant tendon, ligament, muscle, joint and bone mineral density changes and their implications for exercise plus specific implications for working with young people in the 14 to 16 age range, antenatal and postnatal women and older people 50 plus. The musculoskeletal system undertakes significant changes. A basic understanding of the implications for exercise is essential when dealing with the following special populations. Young people, older adults and pre and postnatal women. Young people 14 to 16. Muscle mass steadily increases as children grow from 25% of body weight at birth to 40% by adulthood. During puberty an increase in hormone production results in an increase in muscle mass, particularly for boys. During a child's maturation their bones will suddenly develop at a rapid rate. This is what we call a growth spurt. Growth spurts happen at different rates and ages but commonly girls tend to grow fastest at 12 to 13, ending at around 18. Boys tend to grow fastest at 14 to 15, ending at about 20. During the growth spurt, cartilage is vulnerable to trauma and overuse. Growth plate fractures are more common in boys than girls with the greatest incidence occurring among 14 to 16 year old boys and 11 to 13 year old girls. During the growth spurt, soft tissue around joints is already stretched as muscle growth does not keep up with bone growth, therefore it's at risk of damage. Implications for exercise. Avoid heavy repetitive lifting. Avoid excessive high impact movements, e.g. jumping. Promote optimal technique. Warm up and cool down for longer. Stretch only to the point of mild tension. Older people, 50 plus. Older people may experience progressive loss of bone mass, known as osteopenia. If this progresses, it will develop into osteoporosis. They may also experience a reduction in joint range of movement, thickening of ligaments, loss of elasticity of connective tissues and muscle, wear and tear of hyaline cartilage, which can progress into osteoarthritis, postural changes such as hyperkyphosis, a decrease in functioning fast twitch fibres, loss of muscle mass known as sarcopenia and higher body fat and lower fat free body mass. Implications for exercise. Low impact weight bearing exercises are recommended. Lengthen warm up and cool down lower impact. Strengthen around fracture sites such as the wrist, hip and spine. Promote weight bearing activity. Include activities that improve balance. Lower resistance to accommodate reduced strength. Use a smaller range of motion in stretches to accommodate reduced flexibility. Include functional daily activities, e.g. sit to stand. Antenatal and postnatal women. 
The following are some changes that an antenatal or postnatal woman might experience. Reduced joint stability. This is due to the effects of relaxing. Weaker pelvic floor muscles. Lengthened and weakened abdominal muscles. Postural changes, i.e. hypolordosis or lordosis. Implications for exercise include pelvic floor strengthening, focus on correcting technique and posture, avoid hind lying after 16 weeks, avoid heavy abdominal exercises, avoid high impact exercises, avoid excessive stretching. After birth, avoid all physical stress for two weeks. Avoid exercise for six weeks or 12 weeks for caesarean. Can you now describe the life course of the musculoskeletal system, including relevant tendon, ligament, muscle, joint and bone mineral density changes and their implications for exercise plus specific implications for working with young people in the 14 to 16 age range, antenatal and postnatal women, older people 50 plus. For more health and fitness education, visit www.stormfitnessacademy.co.uk.